reçoivent réponse. Acceptability that illustrates the point about, you know, what the public will want. Well, at the moment, we're looking for somebody with what we call a full facial or pan facial injury. In other words, where the, in the face has been damaged by a process such as a burn or an accident, where the face has been then reconstructed with skin graft or flaps. Um, and this it doesn't really produce a very face like effect. It's like a burn in the hand and the face, and then they had severe and devastating injuries. And it, it, it requires somebody with a psychological robustness um, and you can get an indication of how they might manage this process by how they manage the facial deformity in the first place. In other words, when they had the facial injury, how do they manage that from a psychological point of view and the adjustments they had to go through following that injury. And then how they subsequently managed their reconstructive process when they went through all the plastic surgical operations and some of them have had 50 to 60 to 70 reconstructive procedures. Reasonable skin that would pass as a skin graft or whatever, but not... Well, apart from tissue typing, the HLA and the blood group, which is a standard matching process that occurs in all, all organ transplants, we have an additional uh, matching process, which is on skin tone, texture, and hair color, because obviously these need to be matched as well. And what we ended up looking at it is, is looking at through forensic anthropology in regards to uh, f uh, simulation of a f transplantation from one individual to another. Um, and if you look at the illustrations which we have behind me here, you can see that this is my face here. This is Alex Clark who works with me on the project. And we simulated a transplant between uh, the both of us. And this is my face on top of her craniofacial skeleton. And this is her face on top of my craniofacial skeleton. And what it demonstrates demonstrates really is that you get no transfer of donor identity, which is one of the main concerns for most people I involved in this process. Most people in general public were worried about would I look like, would I see the donor walking down the street if I gave you um, my loved one's face. This is actually what has actually uh, resulted is that it shows you that it doesn't really look like her, but it also doesn't really look like me. So what you get is a hybrid. And what we've performed here is a computer simulation of a transplant between myself uh, and Alex and then Alex and, uh, and my face. Because of this process being very much in the public eye, the likelihood is the donor family is going to become aware of the recipient. The recipient will probably not become aware of the donor, but the, you, you need to be aware that actually it will be likely that you'll, you will know about the, 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 the recipient. En IRM fonctionnel, de récupération de la sensibilité. Il y a, euh, non seulement euh, ce regard dans le, dans le miroir, euh, qui est son propre visage, et puis euh, euh, le geste qu'on lui a. The French approach has been always slightly different than ours. We've always uh, gone for a burn or a, an injury that causes damage to the whole face. The French have talked about what's called an aesthetic unit of the face, which is like a nose, which is called an aesthetic unit or just a, a, a component of the face or the cheek. And their, and their concept has always been to either the nose, upper lip, lower lip, or the combination of, of both. And so their uh, approach is slightly different in that they take not only the skin but the muscle underneath and then the, the deeper linings of the mouth. And so from that point of view, the patients they've been looking at have a different reconstructive need. So our patients are slightly different in that they, what they need is, is all of their face uh, resurfaced, or, or in other words, where they are missing all the skin of their face and they've had it replaced by skin graft. They have looked for patients which are missing all the components of, say, the mid face, and that's why they, they've approached it and succeeded, obviously, in transplanting that type of patient. À l'issue de ces prélèvements, il a fallu reconstituer, et c'est donc le dimanche vers midi qu'a pu être reconstituée à la dernière et qui a déjà beaucoup progressé. Suivante, suivante, s'il vous plaît. Et la voilà ce matin, avant la déjà qu'on entreprend ces exercices de rééducation. 
So the difficulty for me is long-term follow-up, is how do I manage this person for their life? But we're not just talking about the first year to two years, so I need to think about them in long-term. And because the long, there is some long-term risks in regards to the immunosuppression, and they need to be monitored for and cared for. So uh, if they had an infrastructure which they could go back to that could manage that, I could conceivably see we could do something with somebody from a different country. But at the moment, because I want to try and look at the patient uh, as a whole and manage them for their life, I need to look at people really from the British Isles. Revolution. Um, and then a guy called Archibald McIndoo carried it on, who happened to be Gillies, is where you take it from the abdomen, put it onto the arm, bring it up to the face, then hook it onto the face, and then you can move it, this piece of tissues from the abdomen and you can move it around to reconstruct a nose or a forehead or anything.